this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, everyone. Welcome to it. We are just barreling through March. It's March 18th, 01. And no, I don't have the blues, 501 blues. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, if that rings a bell, but thing, certain things like make me think about commercials. And there was this Levi's commercial back in the probably 80s, 90s that was like 501 blues. And just 501 was just burned into my head. So here we are, episode 501. And uh, thanks for sticking with us. If you've been listening a long time, I appreciate you. If you're listening for the very first time, I appreciate you. That's very cool. So now and again, I have guests on the podcast. I've had a lot of guests in the past. And since, I don't know, the last few years, I've started doing a lot more voicemail episodes. That's what this one is. That's where people call in and they ask questions. They tell stories. Um, I find it to be really, really enjoyable. I love hearing from the audience. I love hearing from you. So if you want to call in and be part of this, the number is 360-830-6660. Write that down, pause the podcast, call in, give me your question, whatever it is. A lot of people do that so they don't forget their what they want to talk about on the call. Um, I'd appreciate that. I love it. Uh, if you just want to listen, though, and you don't want to call in, that's totally fine. You don't have to break the fourth wall. Um, we got a lot of MXPX shows coming up. So aside from just podcast stuff, it's been a very busy, busy uh, spring, winter into spring. I guess it just really, you know, we've just had it kind of just turned spring. But um, spring break coming up for uh, for a lot of people in, in April. Um in Texas, I think it's it's actually right now. It happens in March because it gets too hot by the time April rolls around in Texas. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, up in Washington, April. It's it's April 1st. So so uh, actually at the end of this month, March 29th, MXPX is going to be in Mexico City with Sub 41 and the Ataris and, and a bunch of other bands. But uh, we're right there, MXPX with Sub 41. Uh, Mexico City going to be a big show. Come on out if you're down there. Um, tickets are, I assume, available. Go, go. You can go to our website, mxpx.com, and get those. Uh, and then after that, not I think the next week, pretty much, we go to Denver and Salt Lake City, April 5th and 6th. Sold out. Thank you. Um, those shows are going to be awesome. I haven't even just start starting to think about them right now, but I hadn't really thought of, thought too much about the sets until now. Um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to tweak and we're going to, we're going to come up with something new and, and it's going to be good. So, uh, we have no effect shows coming in. I don't know when the Denver show is actually, I do know when I just got to look it up. Um, let me look on my phone here. This is me not being prepared. Uh, July 20th, Denver, Colorado, MXPX is going to be playing with no effects. The whole lineup is no effects, MXPX. Face to face, the Bronx, Swinging Utters, Co Defendants, The Last Gang, The Dentrites, and The Blubs. So, um, that's like a punk and drublist, drublick festival, uh, last no effects shows, final tour, that kind of thing. That's a two a two day show, um, but but all the bands are different. So Friday is when we're playing, and then Saturday is uh, I think Friday. I assume it's Friday. I haven't even looked up what's Jan what's July twentieth. I think it's um well, I would I would assume it was it's a Saturday. Okay. All right, so we're playing the Saturday and not the Sunday. And then MXPX is also playing um in Los Angeles. And that is in October. I don't have the date. It's a long time from now. I can't even really think about it, but Tickets are, I think, already on sale. So don't wait if you're going to go to see No Effects, the last shows in Los Angeles. All right. All right, one more thing before we check out your voicemails. Find A Way Home, our new album, out everywhere. You can find variants on mxpeaks.com. We have vinyl, picture discs. We've got themed clothing, hoodies, T-shirts, um, stuff that isn't themed for, for Find A Way Home. But if you don't already have the Find A Way Home socks, I've been wearing those every show on stage. I'm wearing the Find A Way Home socks. I probably should pull my pants up and show the audience. I'm going to do that at the next show. We'll see what happens. All right. Um, 
let's get to your voicemails. Thank you for for listening to the new record. Thanks for all the love. I uh, appreciate it. That it means the world to me because I say this a lot on this podcast, but we really couldn't do this without you. And this, I also say this on this podcast a lot is is we truly value all of our work, you know, past and present. But to stay relevant, to stay up, to stay a band that people care about more than just having a nostalgia act, we have to keep making new songs. We have to keep putting out new albums, new EPs, new singles, whatever it is, right? We got to keep doing that. And I think when when we get positive mis- response from the new record, we get people listening to the new record, the new songs, and, and, and posting about it and telling us about it, that, that keeps us going, that keeps us motivated, it keeps us, you know, we all have up and down days, you know, yesterday I was just feeling pretty low, you know how you just, something happens and you're just like, you feel like the world is falling apart and nothing's ever going to be normal and, and, you know, it's just, you feel like, am I doing the right thing? Am I even, does anything I do matter? Like, do, do these songs matter? Do, should I keep doing shows? Should I, should, you know, like all these questions, you know, should I keep doing the band? That was, it was that kind of day. It was like, am I going to be able to do this in the future when, you know, if the economy gets rough, I mean, it's already pretty rough, but you get what I'm saying. Like all these unknowns start popping into my head and, and I gotta like, I gotta calm down and, and, and take some time to, to get some perspective and realize, Hey, life is not going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. It's already, it's been the easiest already. Like you've had it easy when you were a, a kid. That was going to, that was easy. Now you got to do things. You can't just sit around. I mean, it seems like we do a lot <laughs> sitting on a plane, going to a Atlanta, going to whatever. Right. But things need to get done and that can cause a lot of stress and existential dread and, and all these questions about what, what the future is going to hold. And I don't want to cause you guys any panic either. You know, it's the last thing I want to do. So I'll just turn this around. Uh, today I woke up feeling so much better, so much more hopeful and open and remembering that I am in the middle of doing hard work. I'm in the middle of doing the things that I need to do and I survive day to day. You know, it's, it's, there's some days are harder than others as far as like workload and what the work is that that I need to do. And, and that probably applies to a lot of you. Some days are harder than others, but it's just, it's going to go like that. It's going to be up. Not every day can be up. I've talked about this on, on the podcast in the form of songwriting, not every song can be a banger. Not every song can be a hit song because then if every song's a hit, it all sounds the same. And so like, well, what stands out from that? That song's the hit in, in a sea of hits, right? So, you know, in that way, like not every day can be a hit, a banger. Some days are going to be down days and getting that, message in my brain doesn't always help my mood like yesterday I knew I was like I had the thoughts I had all I was going through I I still got things done I still made things happen and I still and I didn't necessarily feel great about what I was doing or whatever but I was doing it I I did things I I made things happen I mean My job is not hard. People think it's hard. And, and yeah, it's not like anybody can just do it. And that, I think that's why I have a career is because not everybody can do what I do. But it's not that it's hard. It's just that it's, what do you do? How do you do? Oh, you practice? Well, I spent years practicing. I, I'm, uh, I'm proud to say I'm still learning new things. I'm, um, I'm learning how to play guitar. Uh, not, not how to play guitar. I'm learning how to, a new picking pattern on the guitar. So... I have my own way of picking like that I've done in the past, but it's not the way I hear a lot of people picking. And I'm like, I want to learn that, like what that guy's doing or what that, that lady's doing. I want to learn that. And I, and I finally 
sat down and I was like, I probably should be editing some video or something, but I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to learn something. And I, I looked up a YouTube video and I looked at a few and I was like, that one, that seems, seems good. It was like this guy had just learned himself. He had taught himself how to finger pick. And he, he had the same story that I had, which was, I always kind of wanted to finger pick, but I just thought it was too hard. And it is too hard. Everything's too hard if you don't practice. So what I did was I learned how to do it by watching the video. And then I started practicing. And sure enough, I could do it. Now, can I do it without thinking about it? Kind of, but not, not for long. Can I do it live on stage? Not yet. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to myself yet. I wouldn't do that to you yet. But now that I've told you, I feel like the stakes are even higher because before it was just like I told like my band guys, hey, I'm learning how to do this. I told my wife. But now that I've told at least a few more people on the podcast, you know, listening, now I got to keep practicing because I've been practicing every day. I haven't practiced today. So... I need to practice, um, but I need to practice at least 10 minutes a day. I think that's a reasonable goal. And you don't, for what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm really just to practice finger picking. I'm, I'm doing C, do, 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 I'm doing the, the pattern, do, 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 I'm A minor, do, 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 C, doing things like that. Maybe a G, maybe an F, G, A minor, back up. I'm not, you know, I'm doing a C or a D now and then because it's different strings, same pattern, different strings. Um, but for the most part, I'm still working on getting that muscle memory where you just you can mindlessly do it. I'm still in that stage, and I know for a fact it works. Where if you just practice a lot on something, until it becomes jello, like you can't understand what's happening. I'm not getting better. I'm getting worse. Right? That's when you stop. You take a break. You can take a break as long as a whole day. You can take a break a few hours. Whatever you do, just take a break. Usually about a day is fine. Come back the next day, do, do it again, and you almost always will be better at what you're doing. And sometimes you're not like crazy better. You're just like, you, like I don't feel better. I don't feel better. Well, just keep doing that process. Pretty soon, one of those breaks, you'll come back and you'll just be in, like almost night and day better. That happened with me when I learned to play the drums. I, I learned... Um, the double kick on a single pedal pattern. Um, basically, you know, uh, what we call like uh, <laughs> boom, chuck, boom, chuck, you know, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. That's, uh, there's so many names, but uh, the forbidden beat, you know, the, it's like, you know, it's, it's the skate punk beat, which is, is fast double time, uh, no effects, bad religion, lag wagon, um, you know, MXPX has, has done it. Really, since um, I would say our second album, actually, maybe our first album really. Ha I don't know if it has that. I don't know if Yuri actually could do that until our second or third album. Um, but then, you know, he taught me how to do it, and I and I was trying it. I couldn't get it. I could not get it. And finally, I was like, "Fine, I'm giving up." Came back the next day. Do, 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 do. I'm, I was just tired. My mind was tired. My body was tired came back fresh, muscle memory kicked in, boom. So that's my goal, trying to learn a new picking style. It's it's foreign to me. It's something that I'm still, I still get messed up sometimes, and, I, and then it's not, it's just, it needs to become second nature. And once that happens, I've got myself a new skill. And, um, you know, those things, to me, I can quantify learning <clears throat> learning a picking pattern on guitar as a new skill because it's like I, I understand that in my mind <clears throat> excuse me but uh, I'm sure I do that in other ways I'm sure we all do like when you learn how to use a certain program or an app on your phone you learn a tactic on your phone that's it really helps you get something done a lot better or easier um, there is no easy button but every now and then you discover something that helps you just make the thing. But um, Ryan Holiday, the author, was on a podcast and I was watching a, a clip on his Instagram and he was just talking about how 
you know, his guest was talking about how he, 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 I don't remember the guy, but he basically was saying that most of doing the thing isn't tools, but most people want to know what are the tools you're using? And tools are 1%, like 99% of what you need to do to create something is actually make it actually come up with the ideas, come up with the, what it's going to be. Um, there are, there are programs and apps and tools you can use that you kind of get your creativity from in a way you can spark your ideas off of. And that's, that's valid too. I mean, we all get our ideas from somewhere. It doesn't change the validity if it's from an app or something. Now your ideas may not be very original in that way, but, but I, who am I to say, you know, I, we all have unoriginal ideas all the time. I mean, there's, there's nothing new under the sun as they say. Right. So I, uh, I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've been trying to put thoughts together amidst all the chaos of just all the work that needs to be done. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still by, by the time you hear this, we're pretty much <laughs> wrapping up all of the construction and renovations we've been doing upstairs. I've not only been doing a control room studio reset, if you will, um, new console, Soundcraft 2400, all new channels, all revamped, all done up, all new soldering on all our cables. Like there's, you know, but every step of the way we thought it was just going to be like, let's plug this in. Boom. Plug. Easy. No, every, there was always like, oh, well that channel has a buzz on it. What's that? Well, that's that snake. Can we undo this whole thing and do this thing? And then, well, the outputs aren't working. Go into Pro Tools. Oh, it's a, uh, pin two instead of pin three you know or, or you know it was pin three now it's pin two that kind of thing so little things because we have old technology merging with new technology things don't add up all the time like and you have to jimmy rig it you have to figure it out you have to fix as you go and that's been that's been mxpx that's like the story of our life is we're just trying to fix as we go um you know, the website, working on that always, you know, not always, I mean, we're, but, but it's always like, okay, that needs to be done. So we're like, let's get that going. But um, there's just always something to be done. And, and, and I think, and I think, you know, my point is, is I try not to let myself go get too down because I know that you have to get down to get up. Otherwise there's no up. Um, like I said, there's no hit songs when they're all hits. They all become mediocre again. They're you, they're quite literally in the middle. Like if you have a hit song that's just as much of a hit as every other song, it's not a hit song, you know. So I guess what I'm saying is when you have a great day, enjoy it. Enjoy that day. Document it. Maybe take one, at least one picture I don't, I don't want you to necessarily like spend your time documenting something when you should be enjoying the actual moment. It's it's crazy, you know. You know, shows, going to shows. Shows are events. There are events in our lives that, you know, even small shows that I go to locally here in Bremerton, Washington, or or even Waco when I'm when I'm down there. Those are events to me. Those are it's something to do. It's something to experience. Um, I get to see other musicians, other artists put on a show. I get to see what they do, um, and then on up to like shows that are bigger than ours. I went and saw Fall Out Boy uh, and and Jimmy Eat World, and got to see their new tour, and and got to see you know what they're trying out because they're doing arenas for you know they've done a a couple arena tours, but I mean, it's still kind of new to them, you know? Um, and I see it and I'm like, but they're doing good. They're doing good. And I'm like, okay, all right. And, and I just like to get different perspectives on, on, on things. So yeah, events to me, any, any event, small or big is important. And those are the times when we really make those memories. Um, 
you have a good night with your family, playing board games at home, laughing. You may not remember that one night. You may remember that one night for years and years to come. But if you have like nights like that, more than one, that's going to build memories, lasting memories. For your kids especially, if you have kids, you're gonna, they're going to grow up going, yeah, we used to you know, hang out all the time and play board games together as a family, this, that. I mean, there's a time and place for all these things, and they, they won't always last. So if you do have something like that going on, embrace that. Keep it going. Um, the reason I mention that is because I'm in the middle of one of those things with my parents right now. Um, my parents have been inviting me over to dinner every week uh, as I'm as my family's out of town right now. And um, and we just hang out. We just hang out and talk. And it doesn't now and again, MXPX stuff comes up, but but it's usually just life stuff and, and the world. And what did you hear about this or sports, depending on what's going on with sports. Um, but we've had a couple of those dinners and now we've had enough of them to where it's like become a thing. And I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to not only each time I, I meet up with them, but, but the memories that I'm going to have of, of that, like it's an investment, honestly, in the future. It's an investment now too, because I'm doing it now, but, but spending the time now, I feel like is an investment in my well-being in the future, just having those extra moments with my parents as they're, uh, as we're all getting getting up there, and the world is is uh, getting crazier and crazier. Who knows, right? So for me, I, I choose positivity and I choose joy. And there's dark days, but we can't keep that light from busting through. It really. Uh, as dusty as the air is, that light really helps. Um, all right. I'll stop ranting and raving to you guys. Let's get to some voicemails. <laughs> so, <laughs> I appreciate you. And uh, as always, thanks for being part of it. All right. Here we go. Here's, uh, here's the first one. Hey, Mike. This is Travis in Los Angeles. I came out to the Palladium show. It was fantastic. Um, I've been on an MXPX kick really ever since and just, you know, kind of going through the albums one by one and uh, slowly going the way the Buffalo has always been my personal favorite. And something that really has stood out to me is how uh, melancholy that album is. There's a lot of, a lot of minor chord choices in that album. And just even lyrically, uh, I find it to stand out stylistically and um it just seems uh, like a melancholy album um i'm wondering what's the what what was the inspiration for that and and do you agree with that assessment and, and do you think that um any album will ever have sort of that tonality and, and mood again thanks man yeah I, that's that's a nice assessment Melancholy is a good way to describe it. It probably is a little melancholy. I was going through a lot because we now were a full-time professional rock band, punk rock band, and a lot of people were depending on us. Um, we had a management. We had a management. We had a record label. We had a major record label. <laughs> we had gone through all the legal troubles with Tooth and Nail, and the world was just, it seemed like an unfair place to me. It seemed like the little guy was always getting crushed. Um, I was always making some girl cry. <laughs> you know? So I was learning a lot about myself or trying to. I don't know if I actually had the time to let it sink in. You know, I think I think I write songs, and especially back then, off the cuff. And whatever's making my heart bleed right now, that's what I'm writing about. And, and 
and yeah, I, I I took the first part of what my feelings and I wrote that. And nowadays, I I tend to I tend to let it go more often than not, and and I try to write about how to be positive and how to make it through and how to keep going because there's not enough motivation out there in in in, in the way that people really need it and what what I mean is there's a lot of faux motivation motivation that is meant to pump you up artificially and also sell you something like come on let's do it buy my pills you know they're going to make you strong whatever and you know with MXPX it's like i don't want to sell somebody something they don't need i want I want to provide this music, you know, that can that can mean something to them. But at, but taking it a step back from there, it's like I use this as my diary, and people just happen to relate to it. And over the years, of course, I write somewhat different things. But will I ever write a mel- melancholy album again? I mean, yeah, I, I've written a lot of melancholy songs. Um, I think you mean like songs like For Always, if we all help each other out along the way, maybe everything will be okay. Who decides if you succeed? Who decides those things you want and need? Um, it's all about trying to find your way in the world and realizing everybody else is doing the same thing and, and reaching out a helping hand to to help your, your fellow person, you know, your friend, your your sister your brother um i think we still do that just we do it in a more positive way yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of sadness dripping from that that song in particular and some of these other songs um under lock and key you know that's that's a hard one that's a lot of a lot of words to to sing um but the sentiment is just, man, I'm just, I'm not really, I'm not really a very well put together person and you're better off not getting involved. <laughs> and that's the idea there. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like I, I still have that melancholy tinge, twinge tinge. Um, mistakes will be made off the new record. Um when we broke through off the new record, even stay up all night, stay up all night's got that. So if you haven't heard the new record, please, um, I would just point you to some of those songs, not all the songs. Don't listen to mountains to climb too positive. Don't listen to this is what you told me too positive. The idea behind that song is, uh, this is what you told me. Track two is I'm listening to, my friend, my partner, my, in this case, it was one of my best friends, giving me advice, and I, I wrote a song about it, now, I made up some lines, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I didn't, it's not verbatim exactly what, it, but it was the idea, the idea is like, I'm sitting here getting a pep talk from, from a friend that I really needed, and maybe I could do the same for the audience. So that that's that was the idea is this is what you told me. And, and I'm going to repeat that to to you know to the world. But um don't listen to that song, don't listen to um I, I what I tell myself track 3 it's got a, a little melancholy to it. You can listen to that one. That one's got a little melancholy. But then I would say stick with stay up all night, stick with ready to rage. Stick with Undone, very sad song. Um, maybe it doesn't have as much of the minor sound to it. Um, it's kind of like a, a pop punk song with a sad message. Um, happy sad. Um, Call Me, very, I guess it's kind of an, an up sounding song with a nostalgic. 
yeah, a nostalgic um, vibe mixed into there. So it does have the melancholy thing. Um, but lyrically, lyrically, melody-wise. Um, and then we get to Sunrise. Sunrise, okay, you could argue that doesn't have anything that kind of sounds like Buffalo. Um, I, I would say it sounds more like something that might have been released on on Let It Happen as a B-side, but that we just finally finished. Now, the story from Sunrise, it's an instrumental uh, that was a song that we used as a bridge to get from one song to another, and that's the only reason we used it. Um, but we also liked it. We really thought it was like, it was kind of, why not? Let's just put it on. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have put a song in its place. We would have just taken that song off, and it wouldn't have had 13 songs. But but um, Find A Way Home has 13 songs, counting Sunrise. So so going to the, after Sunrise, we get to When We Broke Through, melancholy sad um has some triumphant ideas for sure and the fact that when we broke through into undiscovered country that's actually a can be a good thing i mean you know it's scary but once you get there uh, oftentimes you're like what was i so scared of so and then mistakes we made yeah mistakes we made is like a nostalgia song it's looking back on on some things in the past, but also um, realizing that I've always needed to work on me. I've always needed to change things about myself. Um, but hey, I mean, that's life. Life is a work in progress, at least in, in my uh, experience. All right. I hope I answered your question uh, a little bit. I think I did. I think I did. And um, And in the future, yeah, whatever I write, I write. Um, I probably will write a lot of melancholy type songs. I, I love the sound of of um sad stuff. Although my son, he can't listen to uh, t moments like this off of our self titled album because it makes him cry. From watching the video when he was a little kid, it gives him so many m memories and emotions. He was just like, I can't listen to that. No, turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> so, so crazy. All right, let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, Mike, it's James here from the band Stankfinger in the UK. Uh, you graciously played our track, Help Yourself, on New Music Monday just before Christmas. Just wanted to say a massive thanks for that. And um, you asked us in, in that episode where we're from, so I just wanted to kind of dial in and um, let you know we're all the way from the east of England, a place called Great Yarmouth, right on the coast, and it actually made me remember of the the only time I've met you, which was at Brixton Academy in London for the Fireball tour, mm. and uh, I remember seeing you in the corridor and, and stealing my moment to say hi, and uh, I'd just come off stage with another band, and um, you asked me where I was from then, and with, with absolutely zero oxygen to my brain, I couldn't even formulate an answer. And I just made a complete fool of myself, and uh, it's haunted me ever since. <laughs> so I just wanted to say a big thank you for playing us. Um, really loved the last album. It was so skate punk. It was really, it really just, just called to me. It was amazing. And uh, our full album is now out called Three Finger Discount. That has helped yourself on it. We, um, we'd love to know what you think, and uh, keep up all the great work. And, uh, yeah, love the show. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, man. Dude, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Um, I don't recall you making an ass out of yourself, so you're off the hook. Don't worry about it. I don't remember. Um, it probably happened so fast that I, it didn't register to me that, you know, I knew you were coming off stage, so I was like, you know, all good. <laughs> I, uh, I have, of all people, understand getting tongue-tied, I understand getting flabbergasted. It happens to me on stage sometimes. I'm trying to say something and my brain doesn't catch up or my, my mouth doesn't catch up with my brain, whatever the case may be. Yeah, dude, so cool. Three-finger discount. I'll, I'll have to check that out. Thanks, James. 
Hey, Mike. My name is Grant. I'm driving around northern Saskatchewan, north of Prince Albert. Lifelong fan. I started with Teenage Politics, backtracked to poking at you, and then fast forward all the way to today. Listen to the last podcast about um, being too nice. That really resonated with me. Um, some of the stuff you said there. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I find the same thing. People saying you're too nice, and, but yet nice people can get the job done too. Uh, a couple questions. I've always wanted to, when I hear you talking about other bands, it always interests me what you what you think. And so it's kind of random, but I was wondering about two extreme opposites. Um, Sheesh is one of the bands. I was wondering if you could give your thoughts on that. And then Marilyn Manson. I think I saw a, a music video where, uh, um, about one of your Christmas music videos that kind of had a bit of a gothic thing. So I wondering what your thoughts on those two bands. I know that's really random but it's a start. And then last thing I wanted to say is hope to see you in Canada. I think you mentioned a Canada tour. So hopefully you're in Calgary or Saskatoon or one of those places. Great on. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the music. Thanks, Grant. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to figure out what, I need to go back and listen to the first band you asked about, Marilyn Manson, and then what, what was it before that? Let me... She's just one of the bands. I was wondering if you said um She's just one of the bands. I was wondering if you could give your thoughts on that. And then Marilyn Manson. I think I saw a, a She's just She's just one of the bands. I was wondering if you could. Uh, I guess I don't know who they are, uh, but I do know who Marilyn Manson is. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm totally misunderstanding what you're saying and it's obvious to everyone else. Let me know. You know, find me on the, the pod, Facebook podcast page on Facebook. Um, Marilyn Manson, I can talk about them. Um, I don't know them personally, but what do I think about Marilyn Manson? I don't I don't know. Uh, in the past, I probably would have been like, oh, I don't like them. But to be honest, I went and saw their live show at the Moore Theater in Seattle when they were coming up, when, when he was, when he had, when the Beautiful People was big, a big hit, and they were doing their tour. That's when I saw them. And I saw them because our tour manager was working the show. Um, Gloria Connors at the time was our was our front of house tour manager. And she was doing a lot of shows in Seattle. When we weren't on tour. And so she invited Tom and I out. Me and Tom was Nesky. Went to the moor. We saw, I don't remember even who opened, but we, you know, they came out and it was like this like podium that looked it wasn't a swastika or anything like that, but everything had a, a, a kind of like a Nazi decor to it. Um, what I mean by that is if you look at like um, old artwork from the Nazi regime from the, the World War II, um, all their like renderings of cities and their uniforms and their, their regalia where they had like a, a lot of like flags streaming down like I know that's I don't know if that's where it originated or whatever but like that's what I, it came to mind when I saw this Marilyn Manson set and it, it really was pretty well done but I was just like wow I mean to me they were doing that to be shocking because Marilyn Manson is all about being shocking um these days I, I'm not as it doesn't bother, nothing really bothers me like that anymore. Like in the entertainment business, I know it's literally just entertainment and people, people sometimes are real, but it's still just entertainment. It's like, he's not worshiping the devil. Like he's just doing his song. He's writing songs. He's trying to send a message to, you know, what his listeners and, and sure, but he's a, he's an artist and you maybe don't like his art. Maybe you do. But it. I try to stay out of it. I try to stay out. I mean, if I like somebody, I like somebody. If I don't, I try to stay out of it. Now, with Marilyn Manson, I like that song. The beautiful people. The beautiful. I mean, it's a good song. Like, dude. Da -da 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 -da. Slaps. So good. But I never, it never pushed me to go further. I never go, okay, I'm buying a Marilyn Manson t-shirt. I'm buying a Marilyn Manson record. No, 
I never even listened to the rest of the record. I just I heard that song, saw them live because I got in for free, enjoyed the show, never saw them again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't tell. I couldn't tell you like what other songs they would do. Remember, like bands like Rob Zombie, White White uh, White Zombie, Rob Zombie, uh, another band that like in the same genre, like they have a co- a couple of really cool songs. More human than human. More human. I love that song. It's really good. I've never listened to any of their other songs. Never had a desire to. I'm like, I probably wouldn't like many of their other songs. But that's just kind of how I am. Like, but the opposite with a band like Bad Religion or The Descendants or, you know, No Effects. Like I heard some of their songs and I was like, I, I gotta hear more. So punk rock to me was always different. I always wanted to hear more, 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 more. Give me more. So um, with pop, same deal. Like I'll hear like a Justin Bieber song. I'll really like it. I ain't checking out his album. Uh, no, I figure they're going to show me their very best song. Now, that's a very surface non-fan thing to do. Like uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to how I view the music that I love the most, you know, in, in the bands that I love the most, of course, I, I listen to their records and listen to their songs and I want to support uh, the same way you all, a lot of you want to support what we do. Yeah, that that is a real thing, but it doesn't apply to every single artist out there. There's other artists I can just check, pick, 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 and I respect them and I like what they're doing, but I'm not giving them all my time and, and I'm not necessarily like paying to go see them play. But there's plenty of artists that I would I would definitely pay to pay to see play. Um, Willie Nelson, I paid one time for him and, and got in for free another time. But like every time, it's just you feel like you're seeing an event. So an event. Um, all right, I think I think I covered it. Thanks for calling in. Oh, Canada. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, when when I said we're coming to Canada, I, I, I meant eventually. Because <laughs> we are working on stuff. It's just, you know, how we go. It's, it's a little slower, but we're working on Australia. We're working on Canada. We're working on um, South America, I think. I think we're working on some Europe stuff. I, I don't know. So I just figure it, it always comes up. It always, Something always comes up, right? And so like, okay, yeah, we, we were working on it. Cool. But um, my department is not booking shows. I do not book shows. People always ask me, hey, can you play this, play that? I'm like, uh, I would, sounds cool, sounds awesome. But I'm not the booking agent, so I can't tell you yes. Uh, because it's, so there's a lot more involved than me just deciding, I want to play your show. So even when it comes to solo stuff, I can't just decide I want to play your show. I, gotta, I have a team of people that if I decide to do something, a lot more work gets given to all these people. So I have to really think about what I say yes to. And I got to pay all these people no matter what, if I'm getting paid or not. So, you know, if I'm doing a charity show, I still got to pay all my people. I mean, they're getting their full rate. And, um, you know, that's that's okay. As long as I know, as long as I, if I agree to it, we all agree knowing what we're getting into. And we go, okay, let's do it. So, all right. Let's get to another another voicemail. Mike, what is good? This is Chris Zickrick from Fort Collins, Colorado. A huge, huge fan of you and MXPX. Uh, fell in love with you guys back in 95 when I heard Punk Rock Show for the first time and uh, have been following you guys ever since. Seen you all over Denver, seen you at Red Rocks, uh, and uh, can't wait to see you in Denver this coming April. Um, I love how you kind of play with that tension of loving the nostalgia, but also uh, being exciting, excited for everything that's like new and coming out. And uh, that's what I get to experience this April because I obviously have loved you guys for a long, long time and been following you guys. Uh, but this year I get to bring my son to his very first MXPX concert. And so I get to relive all of the old while uh, experiencing something very, very new and exciting. So if you are taking um, any requests for Denver, Colorado, we would love to hear Cautious Optimistic. That is uh, our new favorite song off of the new album. 
We love you guys. Can't wait to see you in Denver again. Chris and Clive, can't wait to see you, Denver. Peace. Dude, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. So awesome that your son gets to come out and see it too with you. Anyway, um, so cautious, optimistic. Yes, I'll make sure we play that. We've been doing, we've been kind of just doing certain songs from the new record, Stay Up All Night, Ready to Rage, um, Not Today. We've been doing those every show. We've been mixing up some of the other ones, and no problem. We can make that happen for you. Um, Denver. Denver's getting a lot of MXPX this year. Coming in, in um, you know, in April, and then we'll be back in July. July 20th. It's a Saturday. All right. Hey, Mike. This is Price from West Virginia. I just want to tell you that I really enjoy the podcast. I've been a fan of the music since, like, 98. I love everything. I've seen you guys a few times. I've seen you play solo with the 68th in Berlin in New York. You guys are great. Just keep up the good work. Have a great day, buddy. Bye. Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. It means the world. You guys are amazing. All right, let's get to one more voicemail, and I'll let you guys go. I appreciate you. Thanks for uh, tuning into the podcast. Hi, Mike. My name is Jill. I just wanted to quick call in and let you know that I really, really respect everything that you do. I hopped on your vibe probably about six, seven months ago. And, um, yeah, I really, really am excited and wanted to thank you for doing what you do because it helps. I'm a little bit like you in a sense. So it makes me feel less weird to be able to do the things that I can do, especially where I live in Pennsylvania. And, put it out there for the world to see so that people start to think outside of the box a little bit more like we did when we were kids. And you've been a huge part of that. So I feel like you need to know that at this moment because I just saw, I think the podcast after Philly and New York City and you said that you needed some females to call in. So I am calling in. Um, it's actually quite funny. I was at the Philly show. We waited until the last day. I know it's been sold out for months and months, but we waited the last day because we couldn't really do anything before that. We didn't have the money. And, um, we snagged two tickets. We wanted to get four for my son, Loki, and his girlfriend, Cadence, as well, but they understood. We made it there. It was an awesome night. Y'all did amazing. Um, I got to see Tom walk in. I was thrilled about that because I've been chatting with him on and off a little tiny bit um, in the last couple months. And everything was beautiful. It was just, it was beautiful. And the Wonder Years, dude, oh, my God, beautiful spirit. Anyway, um, I was bummed out. I didn't get to stay till the end because I kind of can feel all the energy, and it was amazing. Don't get me wrong. It was just that it was a little too much. So I, like, Barely made it outside. I wasn't drinking or anything or smoking and barely made it outside before I threw up. <laughs> and uh, there's this fucking awesome homeless dude beside me. And I'm like, he, he's like watching me and taking care of me and shit. And then at the end, he was like, oh, I hope you feel better. And I, he was like, do you have a dollar? And I already told Tom this story, but I fucking didn't have a dollar, of course. But I was like, bro, your words just meant so much to me because this dude just looked out for me for a good two minutes. And my husband was there. But, you know, it was so cool for a stranger to just be like, yo, I see you're not feeling well, not understanding the full spectrum of what I was going through that night with all of the energy coming at me. But anyway, I have about 10 seconds left. So I just want to say I'm so grateful for y'all. You guys are truly the best, and I'm so glad that you're in my life currently. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Jill. Jilly from Philly. Um I don't know if it's like a good selling point that we made you puke <laughs> and you weren't drinking, you weren't smoking. Um, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you, you, you made it outside and um, that's wild. Uh, I've, huh. I'm going to have to tell our sound guy, Andy, about this. Like you made it so, I don't know, so loud that I don't know what it was, but um, I hope it wasn't my singing. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you. Thank you so much for calling. That that's that's the best. It really is. And I'm so glad that um that even 
the homeless people outside MXPX shows are nice people. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny. I've, I've talked to plenty, a, hand, a handful over the years of, of um, homeless people, street people, people just hanging around, not having anything to do with the show. And um, I met a lot of really, really fun characters. I'll never forget the guy outside the Trocadero. We were trying to park. This was, we were actually on tour with Face to Face uh, before they destroyed our van. And this guy was, you know, was like, oh, park over here. Da, da, da. He's like, what's the greatest city in the nation? I'm like, uh, I don't know, Philadelphia. And he's like, generosity. I'm like, oh, okay, we got you, we got you. All right, all right. What's the greatest nation in the world? Oh, well, this one. Okay, we see where you're going, but I don't know. Donation. Damn, that's good. We enjoyed it. We gave him a couple bucks. He went on his way. So uh, life is good. Life is good. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for all your calls. If you want to call in, 360-830-6660. Please, if you don't already, follow MXPX on socials. Please do that. Interact with our stuff. Like it. Um, it just helps get the word out on shows. And the more our socials work, the less money we have to spend on ads and all that. And it's just, it's gotten, everything's gotten so expensive, honestly. I don't want to, if I keep talking, this this end, this podcast is going to end on a, a sour note. So I'm going <laughs> to stop here. But, but uh, I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything you guys do. Anytime you just listen to MXPX on streaming or, or get something off of uh, the website, mxpeaks.com. That all helps us keep the lights on and, and keep this boat afloat. All right, shout out to Bob McKnight. Thank you, my homie. Thanks for producing. Thanks for being on. If you haven't already listened to last week, episode 500, it was a great podcast. Bob and I just talk about a bunch of things and we get real. We really do. So um, I'll leave it to you. And I'll see y'all real soon, some of you. And others, I'll see you, I hope to see you soon. All right.